Hi, it's Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, uh, back with my plans and pans, and back in Washington, really just for two days of work, but it felt like a week. We got a lot of things done and a lot of things to deal with. A lot of talk right now that I'm sure you're hearing about Afghanistan and what exactly is happening at the airport. So there's really a couple of categories of people who are trying to get out of Afghanistan. One are American citizens, um, Americans with visas, uh, American um, permanent residents in the country. So people who have some sort of a credential to come to the United States. The top of the list, of course, are our citizens and legal permanent residents. We have a stack of paper at the office of calls that are coming in from people within the 9th Congressional District who are very anxious to get home. Some of them in those top categories. Others are saying, you know, my brother, my sister, or my mother, we really want them to be able to get out of a Taliban-led Afghanistan. It's hard right now. And you've seen the chaos around the airport. The effort now is to be able to get people into the airport. Once they do, the chances are really good. Tens of thousands of people have been airlifted, some back to the United States, others to countries that will take them. And eventually, those many of those people want to come then to the United States. So all those things are, are in the work. Um, the question also is, how long will that last? How long will the evacuation last? Um, the, the Taliban, for one, says we're not letting any Afghan people out, um, even those people who worked with the government of the United States, and they have promised um, that they would treat those people without revenge, we'll, we'll see. Um, and it's unclear what's going to happen in that category of people. But the other big question, is it going to end at the end of August? As, as promised, and are we gonna be able to get all the people who absolutely deserve to leave, um, all the Americans and all the permanent residents, et cetera, are those people gonna be able to, um, to get out in that period of time? Um, I, I can't answer that right now. Um, it seems like there's been conflicting views um, from the White House on whether or not we're going to be able to go further and whether or not the Afghan government will uh, let that let that happen. If they want to have a relationship with the United States and the rest of the world, um, I'm hoping that they certainly will cooperate on, on that front. So Afghanistan is still an issue and taking up most of the time of the um, constituent advocates at my office right now. The other big issue had to do with legislation that will do really three things. One, and we passed it now into law, and I spoke on the floor about the um, John Lewis Voting Rights Act. Now, you may remember that um, many years ago in um, 1963, um, John Lewis led, was one of the big leaders of the March to Washington, a very young John Lewis. He was the youngest pe person to speak. And by the way, when he died, he was the last of the speakers at that event. Um, but two years later, um, we saw LBJ sign the Voting Rights Act of 1965, thanks to John Lewis, who was a principal player. And of course, you know that he almost gave his life fighting for the, the, the right to vote. John Lewis said that the right to vote is the most powerful nonviolent tool that we have in our democracy. And uh, I 
said on the floor that it is one of the great privileges and honors of my life to have been able to serve with John Lewis and to call him my precious friend. We were good friends. So we passed that bill in the House of Representatives. Not a single Republican voted to restore the voting rights that over the years the Supreme Court has taken away and limited the, um, the, the, the law that we passed, the Voting Rights Act that we passed in 1965 in this country. Um, and they all said that this is just a plan for the Democrats to take over the national voting system. It was really disappointing. So we passed it in the House. I'm hoping that we can get 10 senators who will be smart enough to understand that this is a fundamental right that needs to be restored and that we can't let the states who now have like 400 bills that have been introduced that would um, limit the, the right to, to vote. Um, the, so that was one part of the legislation that we did today. Um, number two, we voted and set a date for the Senate's bipartisan infrastructure bill. So um, September, I'm not sure exactly, um, we're, we, we promised that by that date, September 20-something, we're going to make sure that we pass in the House the Senate's version, and hopefully maybe we can make some changes according to Chairman Peter DeFazio um, of the Infrastructure Committee. He wants to see if we can make some changes. But in any case, that vote will take place in September. That's, in, that's, that's the promise right now. And the third one, which I think is incredibly significant, is we passed the budget resol resolution that sets the stage now for the Build Back Better plan, the big Build Back Better law um, is passed that will allow us now to um, consider what the Senate already considered a $3.5 trillion package of legislation that does so much um, it would actually um, be uh, tax breaks. It would create about 2 million jobs a year in the, uh, in the United States. And it would actually lower costs as well, like allowing Medicare to negotiate for lower prescription drug prices. One of the top issues that people worry about and I certainly hear it a lot in the 9th Congressional District, and so do all of the other members of, of Congress. We need to lower prescription drug prices, and that will be in the bill, along with things like significant money for child care. We would continue the child tax credit that we passed, but only in the, uh, in the first bill uh, months ago. So we want to make it permanent. Um, we will also stop funding the um, fossil fuel industry. Do you know that we're still sub uh, subsidizing gas and uh, oil companies? Um, I mean, it's just ridiculous after all these years, considering that they are the main source of the greenhouse gases. Um, and so we would stop doing that, and we would pay for all of this through um, also asking the wealthiest corporations and the, the richest Americans, the billionaires, to um, pay their fair share, which is, by the way, very popular in a bipartisan way in our country that it's about time that they paid. Because after all, our president has said, we want an economy that grows from the bottom up and from the middle out and not the trickle down that we've had that gives has given tax breaks to literally the wealthiest uh, Americans. So you're gonna see job creation, you're gonna see long-term care, you're gonna see an expansion of Medicare, 
hopefully to at least we're going to consider eye care and ear care and you know hearing aids and dental care um, all these things now are are on the table and i'm going to be absolutely pushing for i have a whole list of things that i want to have in that in that package so we're going to be fighting for 3.5 trillion dollars it will be a battle maybe that we'll have to compromise on that all of which is going to go to make families better stronger create more jobs for people and small businesses um, and just ordinary uh, Americans and the uh, and the environment all of that is on the table now we're going to be doing it over the next month or so and I am really really looking forward to that um, so you know there was a battle just to get that uh, budget bill passed the budget, uh, resolution passed. There were some Democrats, too, that were not so keen on that. They wanted to just pass the, infra the Senate infrastructure bill and then move on. Um, and, and we said, no, we want to make sure that we're set up to do this Build Back Better plan. So we did it, and we did the John Lewis bill. So, um, you know, nothing comes easy, but I have told people, do not bet against Nancy Pelosi. This is a, a, a woman who knows how to get things done. And she took, a, it took a, overnight, we thought we were gonna be able to vote yesterday, it took overnight to, to get it done, but we got it done. So the coronavirus, of course, and we saw in Illinois alone, 2,989 new cases confirmed COVID-19 yesterday. I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, I think I, I mentioned that we had, I think it was something like 18 days of zero new cases. So we're in a, in a new phase. This is uh, like the third phase of the, uh, of the coronavirus and all of it is the Delta variant. Pretty much all of it in the United States is the Delta variant. Um, still, for example, I was in a, um, a, a classified briefing this morning on Afghanistan, and um, it was announced that people should wear masks, and there were people, members of Congress, yelling about it. We didn't want to be in the auditorium with people who were unmasked, and they were yelling about it. And they are representative of people around the country still resistant to um, getting the, the vaccine. And right now the vaccine is working against the, 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 the Delta variant. However, um, we are seeing people now who got the vaccines early um, who are getting diagnosed as positive for the, the, the virus. That in, includes one of my staffers. Um, and so we, um, some people need to um, consider at least getting a booster, um, although it is not necessarily recommended for um, people, you know, who over the year have gotten the, 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 the vaccine. We shouldn't be rushing to get a booster. What we should be rushing to do is to make sure that people around the world are getting the vaccines um, before we get a variant that is immune, that is resistant. So, you know, we're, we're, we're seeing some serious decisions that families are making. For example, if schools are not requiring masking, I have seen and heard about parents who are deciding, what am I going to do? Am I going to homeschool? Am I going to find another school? Can I find another school in my state? where I can know that uh, the children are vac vaccinated, because as you well know, children under 12 are not eligible to get vaccinated at all. Um, and so this is a real dilemma, once again, that families are, are facing. So let's all do our part to crush the virus, to say, stay safe, and uh, have a good rest of the week. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks so much.
Thank you for watching my video. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, where my handle is at Jan Schakowsky.